Hey everyone, this is Jordan with Food Bevy and excited for today's webinar. Um, we are going to be talking about accessing uh, capital through small business bonds with my friend and guest, uh, Ben Stein, who's with SMBX. And we'll be talking through kind of some new opportunities and regulations that have come about in the last couple of years. Some of you have heard of equity crowdfunding, uh, Ben's platform they, and the company he works for is similar, but instead of equity, they you're able to raise using business bonds. We'll get into that a little bit more. So Ben, I'd love for you just to give a quick intro and then we jump right into it. Yeah. Howdy folks. I'm Ben. Um, born in Chicago because I saw some folks mentioning Chicago in the chat. And then right now I'm located in San Francisco. So I know a few folks of you are, are also local to me where I live now. Um, if you ever want to get a coffee or a drink, let me know. You know, I know there's this whole thing going on that we're not going to, that, sh that shall not be named. Um, but, but always happy to meet in person and make connections. Um, Really excited to talk to you all today about small business bonds and SMBX. The way I'm going to structure it is talk a little bit about how we started the company, some of the trends I think we're just seeing in the industry, and um, then we'll tie that back a little bit in how SMBX works, but going to kind of lay off the sales talk and allow you guys to, to figure out why this is good on your, on your own. And then from there... Um, you know, open it up. We can have a discussion. We can talk about trends in the industry. My background is, uh, well, I used to work at Square for a number of years. So I have a deep background in working with small businesses. I'm an equity investor on the side. I'm a debt investor in some things as well. Um, so happy to answer any and all questions related to entrepreneurship, whether that's related to SMBX or not. Um, but I think we're right at that five minute aftermark. So maybe I'll just jump into, into the um, presentation. Is that cool? Let's do it. Cool. Let's make sure everyone can see this. How does this look? Good? Looks good. Still with me? Awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, I'm here with SMBX. We stand for the Small and Medium Business Exchange. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later and in the future. Um, we're going to talk about accessing capital through small business bonds. Today in America, we have two financial systems. Uh, the first financial system is for large corporations. Large corporations are allowed to raise debt from the public through public marketplaces, exchanges, the Wall Street bond markets, right? Think about a business like Apple that wants to borrow a billion dollars in debt, right? What do they do? They go to a public exchange, they offer bonds on the exchanges, and retail investors, hedge funds, institutional investors can purchase those bonds. Um, those are generally regulated by companies like the SEC and FINRA. Um, and you can access those investments as a retail investor pretty easily, right? Through Robinhood, E-Trade, Schwab, Ameriprise, any of these kind of traditional brokerages, traditional financial places. Small and medium businesses are not given the same opportunity to raise debt from the public. Um, we are constricted, or were constricted, I should say, to traditional private lending channels, right? If you want to go take out debt, you have to go to a commercial bank, a digital lending platform often, um, but generally private funding channels that don't allow you to offer debt assets to the public. And so we looked at this, and back in 2016, when the Jobs Act was passed, and specifically... Um, reg CF within that, I think that's when you saw the proliferation and creation of a bunch of equity crowdfunding platforms, right? Folks took the same piece of what they saw in the public markets and public businesses being able to offer equity to retail investors, but nobody really looked at debt. And so SMBX said, we actually think the debt side is much more interesting for a number of reasons. Number one being most business owners want to hold on to as much of their company as possible if they can grow. And so we started to play around with the idea of how could we create a platform to allow small and medium businesses to offer debt to the public. We also knew how banks worked, right? And I think all of you probably have a sense of this. Um, but I like to reconvene it because it's kind of messed up system. And I think it lays a good foundation for how that second part of our financial system works. We as community members keep our money in a checking and savings account, right? 
banks lend that money out to small businesses, right? Banks don't have any money of their own. They have to keep, I think it's like 30% of it, right? In cash, which is called the Federal Reserve, but they're actually allowed to lend out your money. And you don't have as an investor or as a, as a, as a just an individual person, think about not as the entrepreneur in this case, you don't have any decision-making over who that money is lent to, right? You have no say in what type of world that creates. Banks get to make the decisions on who gets those, those pieces of debt and where your money's lent, right? And then the small businesses, when they do get that loan from the bank, pay that back with interest, and the bank keeps that money despite lending out our capital. There's probably like another little dotted line from the bank to the community that's like, here's your one cent on, you know, for your, you know, monthly savings interest. Um, but they keep the other like $11 for themselves. So we wanted to think about kind of how this ecosystem works. And we thought, well, what if there was a way for community members to put money directly into small businesses, right? And take power over their money, have more decisions on where that money's invested either locally or around things that they were passionate about, their interests, it could be their demographics, right? So that um, if you didn't want your money lent into oil and gas drilling, or if you did, right, you would have a say in that decision and what your money, what type of world your money went to create. So we're looking at this banking system, we understood the kind of the regulatory play that we were looking at with the two different financial systems. And the third piece that really sunk to us was retail investors. We saw this trend, I think, especially in 2019 and 2020, of people becoming more and more comfortable making their own investment decisions. And I think this is really, really important for you all as, as entrepreneurs to, to take hold of, is people want power over their money and they're making more decisions themselves. You don't go to your financial advisor to buy Bitcoin, right? You now have access to make your own financial decisions through apps like Public and Robinhood and Square Cash and all these other things that are kind of allowing you to make investment decisions on your own. People are waking up with things like GameStop, if you followed that trend, right? That was not something that you went to your financial advisor and said, I'm going to go do this. That's something you kind of did on your own. And so more and more with the rise of crypto, with the rise of decentralization, and just with the simplicity that's coming with the ease it is to buy stocks, right, through your phone, we know that investors around the world and directly in your community, right, want to make decisions themselves. And I think all things being equal, they'd probably rather invest in your business than a public business. What does this boil down to? The joke I like to make is, I don't even know what's in a venti mocha, but it probably takes me longer to go buy a venti mocha through the Starbucks app, have that made, delivered, and ordered than it is for me to buy a share of Starbucks. And so the question I pose to entrepreneurs is, how easy is it for people to invest in your business? What's the process like? And if you can simplify that process and remove the barriers to entry in terms of investing, it's going to open up access to capital for you in a way that wasn't there before. There are folks who want to put money into your business, but the 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 options that you're providing and the barriers that are there for that to happen um, make it too difficult to, to overcome that chasm. I'm going to keep moving forward here. So what does this mean? Well, what are the ways that most folks are looking at raising capital right now? It's on the equity side. The first piece of the challenge of that is most entrepreneurs I speak to, given the choice, don't want to give away equity in their business, right? Equity can be immensely valuable, especially as you're building a growing business. The less you can give away, the more ownership you retain, right? The better generally it is for you long-term. And that's not always the case, right? Some equity investments unlock strategic partnerships, advisors, certain folks, right? I'm not saying equity investing doesn't have a place in this, but if you're a business that just wants to survive or grow a little bit and doesn't have aspirations of being $100 million, $200 million growth plans, you just want to provide you know, a certain lifestyle for yourself and your family, you want to hold on to that equity as much as possible. You want to hold on to that decision making. The second piece that prevents folks from investing in your business is liquidity. On the equity side, if I were to make an investment, I have to wait five to seven years. Well, think about the portfolio of people who are, could be potential investors and how many of those folks can wait five to seven years to see a return. You're cutting that piece off, right? There's people who that just immediately won't work for because of their finances, right? Or because of the risk involved, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
there's certainty, right? There's challenges and certainty. When I make an equity investment, I don't know what in those five to seven years that's going to be worth. I can't make a retirement plan on that happening. And there's a certain set of things that go into that decision, right? That make it really, really challenging. I need an exit. Well, what's that exit going to be at, right? And so as a result, if you think about this overall pool of people who would want to invest in your business and you told them they had no liquidity in their investment and you can't tell them exactly how much they're going to get paid or when that payment's going to come. And then the additional due diligence of if you're not on a, a crowdfunding platform, lawyer fees, right? Talking to your financial advisor, the hourly bills that come through that, thinking through payments, the time it takes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The expense, both in resources and monetary, right? The dollar amount you have to spend to raise capital just increases and increases and increases. So what does this look like? Well, you're probably going out and having conversations that exist like this. Come invest in my business. I'll pay you back someday at some point in time, some amount of money. And I have to then deliver a pitch that uh, provides certainty, not only around my immediate roadmap and what I actually need the capital for today, but also that future roadmap. It's a lengthy process. It's very involved because you're evaluating not only the business today, but the business long-term, right? And you don't have a lot of certainty or things that you can talk to folks after. So as a result, the investors, right, that are able to make these types of investments are limited. And that's why we don't feel equity is the right solution all the time to raising capital. Investors need a lot of capital to be able to invest. I'm not going to be able to make a thousand dollar investment in your business, right? I'm going to need $25,000 for that to really mean something, right? Or for it to be worth it to go through that process if you're doing angel investing, right? Or looking at a friends and family round. It's going to be a really long payback period, which poses issues not only in the short term, but the long term. And so you're limiting the number of people who can possibly invest in your business. So we took, taking it a step back, we took the financial systems that we see today. We looked at the way that the banking system works. And then we look at, at this trend of how retail investors are investing and the challenges facing equity rounds. And we said, let's develop a solution to make raising capital easier for entrepreneurs. And so how SMBX works is your business offers bonds to members of the community. People buy those bonds the same way or in a very similar way that you would buy a public bond, a municipal bond, right? A corporate bond. And then the small business pays back principal and interest directly to the community. People have control over their money, right? It's an easier conversation to have, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And so as virtue, the idea is I invest in business X. Most recent one I think we worked with was Super Belly Ferments is a great CPG brand that we worked with. And then Super Belly Ferments, the same way that they would pay me back if it was a bank loan, makes a monthly payment right, to SMBX. And then SMBX distributes that capital to the investors every month. As a result, your community earns interest, right? You're redirecting this debt from being paid to a bank where it's unnoticed to members of your community who are certainly gonna take note, getting paid 20 bucks a month from your business. So what we developed was an app and a website. For small business owners, this looks very similar to a loan, right? You raise capital, you make a monthly payment, one monthly payment. And then the difference is we distribute that monthly payment to your investors as opposed to that staying with a bank or one institution. You get free marketing by virtue of doing this. You get something new to talk to your existing customers about. It's an easier conversation because of, hey, you can't put a sign right next to your point of sale system or on your website that says, invest in my business and I'll pay you back someday, some amount at some point in time. Now you can put a sign up on your site that says, invest $1,000 in my business and I'll pay you $20 a month for the next five years. That virtue of changing that conversation, right, from hypothetical to real tangible terms opens up access to capital for you, right? Makes it easier to pitch, right? And does a whole bunch of other things that are, that are really, really helpful. My favorite thing of those is the monthly payments. Imagine getting paid every month by your favorite local business or by your favorite CPG brand. Well, what is that gonna do? It's gonna drive sales. Every time I get that monthly payment, I'm probably gonna turn around and use that to purchase your product. 
It's going to drive retention. It's an easy reminder outside of email and social and all these clogged channels and all this, like my least favorite thing that happens now, every time you buy something, you end up on an email list. Like who made that decision for us as a, as a society that we, that every time we buy something, right, that's going to happen. So that channel is now being more and more clogged, right? How do you stick through email? Well, what about a deposit in somebody's bank account, just paying them back for supporting your growing business because they love your product or they're, they're you know, a supporter of you as an entrepreneur. It drives referrals. We've seen folks who uh, are able to close catering deals, as an example, or large corporate deals because the customers are, their customers are receiving monthly payments and now they're incentivized to help that business grow to protect that passive monthly income, right? And it can also drive customer acquisition. The SMBX network of investors, right, oftentimes invests in a product first or in a business first and then ends up purchasing after that, right? And that's true regardless of if you put out a PR piece, right, about uh, your bond offering or you post it in a blog, or there's ways, you know, potentially in the future, we might be able to work with Food Bevy on that, right? Great. Now I'm discovering your business because of the investment, and then I'm getting my monthly payments and I'm converting into a customer later. And then lastly, one thing that we don't do is no giveaways. There's no freebies. There's no 15% off for the rest of your life. It's a very simple ROI, right? What we want to do is create a way where you don't have to spend $50,000 to raise $250,000, right? You can pay a simple fee. We charge 3.5% of your total raise, and that's it. And then for retail investors, the way we exist is passive monthly income from places they love. They have a sense of ownership without actual ownership. And what we find is most folks turn their compound returns back into other businesses. So it's not just about I can earn 7% interest from investing in a CPG business, but then every time I get that $20 back, right, I'm putting that into other businesses in the future. And that actually drives true wealth creation within many of our users. Hey ben, what I really like about um, this, I think when, we, when we've talked a couple of times is that you can really engage with your customers but beyond that like one touch point because you know I've participated in seeing a bunch of like equity crowdfunding campaigns, which are great, right? Like you can get, if you can build up excitement for people, you can get that like upfront cash infusion, but then it's really hard to maintain the um, relationship with those people over time because you're basically like, oh, look, we're like continuing to try. Here's like our growth, but they don't see any like tangible benefit versus getting an actual like deposit in their bank every month, which right, like as a brand, you should, you know, as you're growing, you still might not be like overall profitable, but at least like people feel like you're growing because you're able to pay them back. And so there's a much more sense of like, oh, okay, I see like a very tangible immediate benefit to this versus something that's theoretical. You're, you're exactly right. We talk a lot about the investment experience and the investment experience on the equity side is I put in money and then I wait and I wait and I wait and I wait and I then I forget about it at some point, right? Unless I'm getting a weekly update or there's some check in there or a big announcement, but there's nothing else for me to actually do once I invest. We tried to flip that around so that your investment experience actually begins when you invest in the business, right? That's when things start happening and when you start engaging with the brand, um, right? And this monthly pop, this monthly payment drives, you know, social engagement as well. Every time I see somebody on the SMBX platform, now I'm biased, obviously, right? But I'm liking that post, I'm commenting, I'm sharing and posting because I'm proud, right? To have those folks as part of our community. That works the same for a small business as well, right? Especially for CPG businesses is these are opportunities now that monthly payment to engage your community, engage your most loyal customers and your most loyal followers and drive them forward. Excuse me, Jordan. I'm sorry. Am I allowed yeah. to ask questions or should I just type them into the platform? We're gonna have a uh, right. We're gonna have a uh, Q and A at the end. So okay. let's uh, get through the main piece. If there's anything specific, though, you can hop on and ask right now on like the slide. But if there's a general question, then we'll do those at the end. I have like I think three more slides, so it should be. Yep, I can wait. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Um, all right. Cool. Yeah, Brian, we'll get to your question at the end as well. But yeah, Ben, let's just we'll get through this. Cool. Um, so I talked a little bit about this just to just to drive it home, right? we've talked about this. So monthly payments, you get grow new sales and new referrals, right? You get new revenue streams. One of my favorite stories is a company by the name of Shift Caffeine we worked with. They are cold brew coffee in a can. They call themselves the world's first uh, coffee brewery. They raised about $100,000 with us. 
after raising a bunch of the investors were like, I want to rep your brand. I want to wear a shift caffeine hat. I want to wear a shift caffeine shirt. I want to share this investment because I love this coffee. It's coffee culture. It's car culture. It's all these things that are important to me. And so now all of a sudden this new revenue stream opens up, right? Because you can go create t-shirts or hats because you have stronger brand affinity with folks. And now you're selling, you know, t-shirts for that you buy for 15 bucks for 30 or whatever it is, right? Folks are sharing your brand in different ways. It facilitates the creation of new income streams in a lot of ways. Sometimes that's referrals, sometimes that's catering, sometimes that's large partnerships or corporate, right? There's a whole bunch of things that that can, that can turn itself into. And then lastly, engaging your existing customers. Talk a little bit about this, but higher LTV. How do I take an existing customer who purchases from me weekly or monthly and grow their LTV beyond that? Get them to invest, get them to be part of the brand, get them to feel like they own a portion of the company without actually having ownership. And that is, you know, all these things happen by virtue of these monthly payments. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how it works. This is like the salesy part of the pitch, if anything. So um, the first thing that we do is we prepare so we take a look at your business and we get you what's thought of as like pre-qualified for a small business loan or think about it as getting pre-qualified for a mortgage. We'll look at your financial statements and your tax returns. And then within 24 hours, we come back to you with an offer that says you qualify to raise $250,000 at 6% interest paid back over seven years. Here's your monthly payment. Here's your total interest paid. Here's all of the details that are kind of involved in that. We then, uh, if that works for you and those terms work for you, we ask you to sign in a letter of intent that says, hey, I agree to work with SMBX. That allows us to go and invest additional resources into supporting your raise and to getting you ready to raise. So we do two things. Our marketing team will work with you to help you think through ways that you can activate your audience. We don't do your marketing for you, but we will assist you in coming up with a strategy on what's the right messaging. Do we use an email list? Do we use you know, something else? Do we use social? And kind of help you and assist you in thinking through what your strategy for your raise is, right? Emails to friends and family and coming up with the language that we know works. And then our ops team will help take care of all of the necessary paperwork for you. So that's like opening escrow accounts for investors to put money in so we can hold it in escrow. It's filing forms with the SEC. It's going through all those things that you would probably generally go through with a uh, Reg CF platform. But we have to do all these things to get your business ready to, to, to issue bonds. Part of that is reviewing your financials, making sure there's no secret sauce in there that, we, that we're disclosing for competitors. Um, and, and just getting everything kind of ready for launch. We launch your offering. Um, money comes in from investors. We'll market to our audience, right? You market to your audience. And then through that, raises are successful. Once you have your money or that offering ends, we close. We transfer bond certificates to investors. So I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember the days when your grandma would give you like a paper bond right? And it would have a coupon and you could take your coupon to the bank. We do a digital version of that with your brand and your business. So folks actually receive something, some of that. Most folks actually, some folks we have actually print those out and like keep little paper copies of their bonds or they gift them to friends and family, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you make one monthly payment every month to SMBX. And then every month we take that payment, we say, hey, you got paid $2 and you got paid 20 bucks. And here's your monthly payment of a thousand because you put in, you know, X dollars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Qualifications. So talk a little bit about the businesses that qualify to raise with us. Most businesses have two plus years of operating history. Um, we can go a little bit less than that, um, but we try and find businesses that already exist. We are not for, as you can see at the bottom there, we're not for startups or pre-revenue businesses. Debt is not the right solution for you to get your business going. We believe debt is the right solution to support a growing business. You should be looking at raising or refinancing between $25,000 and $5 million. Should have consistent or growing year-over-year -year revenue. And then the last piece that I just want to emphasize is your business should be generally profitable. One of the things that um, is different about equity investing than debt investing, and you may already know this, right, but the money has to be repaid back. And so as a result of that, we can't give you, you know, if your business isn't profitable, we don't see a path forward for you being able to make enough money up to, you know, put that money into your business and then get a return to pay that interest back to investors. 
you know, it's going to be harder for us to underwrite it. That's not always the case. Sometimes there are businesses that I'm very familiar with. Breweries are a great example, where at the end of the year, if you're going to either declare revenue or buy a big piece of equipment so that you can produce more beer the next year, right? And you're adding to your balance sheet. And that's the reason why your business is breaking even or less than profitable. You know, we should have a discussion about that, but we are not, um, just to say, right, because this money has to be paid back, it's, it's, not, it's not venture debt, right? It's not venture capital equity. It's not, you know, angel investment money that doesn't need to be paid back until something happens in the future. You know, you're going to have to make that monthly payment. So your business is going to be, need to be able to support that monthly repayment. Um, that's it. I was going to show you guys a quick demo of just our website and a couple businesses that are raising. But um, let me see if I can do that really quick. Hold on. But let's stop there. Let's take questions because I know folks had some stuff. And then if you guys want to see a demo after, I can I can share that with you. Awesome. Appreciate that, Ben. Um, I know we had a couple of questions. I'll start with Brian's first. And then uh, Fred, if you're still available, have you hop on and ask yours? So Brian asks, is the 3.5% off the top off the top of the loan or is it paid over the life? So it's at the top, so the way it works is, let's say you raise $100,000, we will deposit $96,500 into your account. That's it. Okay. And then you're paying back the loan as though you had borrowed $100,000. Awesome, perfect. Fred, are you still available to hop on? Yeah, I'm still here. Uh, awesome. I'm, I'm still here, sorry guys. I uh, just had another call come in. So um, my question was, and then you guys might have answered this. I, I apologize, but my question is, uh, is on the terms is on the terms, right? So is this like a term loan, and we're paying principal and interest, or is it just interest only, and then there's a, a, a balloon payment at the end after you know five to ten years? How how does that process work? It is it is principal and interest in each payment. The reason okay. we do that is. Um, is for to open up opportunities with investors. If you're going to pay investors just interest, that monthly payment changes from like $20 a month to $2 a month. And so just by including principal in that monthly payment, you're activating and engaging these folks. I can give you a real world example, like folks on our platform, a thousand dollar investment generating 20 bucks for someone is like pretty much unheard of monthly. Now, most of that that's coming back to them, right, is their principal, but we disguise that by combining both together. And the other way that that helps is to make sure that um, as you're paying back your monthly payment, right, you don't default at the end. And if you default on the last payment, right, investors don't make their money back by getting investors back their money and finding kind of this medium that's very similar to, you know, a fixed term loan that you would get from a bank or an SBA 7A loan is probably the, the closest, you know. Yeah, no, no, I no, I understand why you do it. I just wanted to make sure I was clear on the terms. That's it. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Awesome. Great question, Fred. Um, I actually had a question. Are you seeing that the investors are coming from the platform or coming from the brand's community and what percentage? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Um, so I would say in general, about 25% of your raise will come just by virtue of launching on SMBX and the activation work that our team can do. Um, some of that comes right at the beginning folks, you know, our community knows that getting businesses off to a strong start makes it your, your life as an entrepreneur easier to raise in the future. So folks want to get in early. And the other part of that kind of comes towards the end. They like to see traction, like to see entrepreneurs who are doing work and raising money from their own community, because that that's an indication of product market fit. Uh, and so some of that, you know, fills out at the end, but over the lifetime of that raise, it comes out to be about 25%. Awesome. But yeah, I think, you know, we talked to you and you mentioned this, but your team helps with like the marketing setup and even sometimes like creating content and kind of best practices for how to get it out there, right? Yeah, we are not a full service firm. So you can't, SMBX cannot raise for you. I think that's a really important distinction to make, but we can support you in, we know you're a busy entrepreneur. You need to be running your business at the same time that you're raising. And so our goal is to help facilitate making that process easier for you. I can't post on your Instagram, but I can help you come up with language that we know works to drive conversions that you can then convert into your own brand voice that then you can post on Instagram, right? Or a newsletter. I'm not going to log into your MailChimp to send the newsletter for you, right? But we can work together to come up with the language, right? That we know works, combine that with how you want to position this race to your community, which oftentimes we do a lot of coaching on it coming from a position of strength. You kind of mentioned this a little bit in the beginning, Jordan, which is like, 
this is oftentimes seen as an alternative investment. We don't really love that term because it makes it seem like you can't qualify for other ways of funding. I think that part of this is crowdfunding emerged out of being able to support a medical debt, right? It was things that folks couldn't afford or couldn't get funded otherwise. And that was kind of the term that crowdfunding got attached to. But we actually think that this should be the preferred method, right, to raise capital. Why should banks get all the best businesses and retail investors not get those? Um, what we want to do is reward the community, right, and give the community a chance to earn these returns. You guys have an opportunity to offer a lucrative investment opportunity. Offer, especially in today's market, right? If you look at, you know, just the last couple months and you look at the stock market, compare that to seven and a half percent interest earned over the course of, you know, five years, right? Being that being paid back monthly and being able to reinvest that, that is, you have within your power the opportunity to offer a lucrative investment opportunity. And if you position it as such, right, it's going to come off a lot better. You're going to come off stronger than if you say, oh, please come help, right? We're doing this because we couldn't go do those other things. That's why our underwriting is also, you know, just done in a way that that supports, you know, existing entrepreneurs and folks who would, who would be able to raise capital. Awesome. Uh, another question from Brian, do you work with CBD companies? We, uh, we as SMBX do. Um, our banking partner does sometimes. And so part of this is, it's not really our decision. We have to, our banking partner has to approve the business to hold their funds in escrow. And so it's a case by case basis for that. Awesome. And then Stephanie asked, how does the Start Engine platform compare to this? Yeah. So Start Engine, if I'm correct, is mostly equity. Um, so again, that investment experience is come invest in my platform, right? I'll pay you back someday at some point. They own a portion of the company. With SMBX, there is no, um, there's no, there's no equity involved. You're not giving away any ownership. You're not giving away any shares to raise capital. You're just creating an asset called the small business bond that your company issues. And um, that's, the, that's the short of it. Awesome. And then have you seen any impacts based on COVID for like business qualifications? Like if they had a down year last year, but we're trending upward and 2022 looks better? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. I think, you know, the best way I can answer that is um, you're still standing. And that is, I think, an incredible testament to the type of entrepreneur and the type of business you've built. A lot of folks are not. A lot of really amazing businesses that have been in business for 50 years did not survive that. Um, and so, you know, what we look at is I think just making it this far and still having a business is a testament to that we take into consideration with underwriting. The other piece is you'll find that we are not a bank. So our decisions are not yes, no, goodbye. Sorry, we don't care about you. We try and treat everyone like family. And so let's have a conversation about why that happened, right? Let's have a conversation about what's on the horizon. It's as much qualitative for us as it is quantitative. We have to see a path back to protect our investors and you being able to make that monthly payment. And it can't be based on hypotheticals. So it can't be based on oh, but I will hopefully grow at 10%. But if you have a letter of intent from a supplier or you're trying to, we've helped a lot of folks who don't have the capital just to get into Whole Foods, right? And so if you have those things lined up and you're just looking for the capital to execute, let's have that conversation and, and we'll more often than not try and find a way to make it work. Great. And then what happens if a company misses a payment or defaults? Great question. Um, so I think there's a misconception a little bit that, um, there that defaults happen when there's just like a random red flag. We saw that once in our life, it certainly could happen again, but COVID was like, all of a sudden, a bunch of people couldn't make payments. That's like not, it's, it could happen again. I'm not going to say it isn't, we could have a zombie apocalypse, like who knows what, what's next on the horizon based on everything that's been thrown at us the last two years. Um, but uh, what we do is the first thing we do is we're going to reach out to you and figure out why did you miss that monthly payment? What we've done in the past is somebody missed it, we covered it, and they just changed bank accounts and forgot to tell us. That is like a very simple reason where we don't want to harm your reputation with your investors by missing that monthly payment. So we cover it and then we figure out kind of what's wrong. 
Um, if you're missing that monthly payment because you can't afford it, what we hope is you work with us early on and we see the yellow and the orange flags before the red flag where that happens. And then we can work with you to identify you know, solutions to you know, help there. Sometimes that's bringing in an equity investor, right? Or helping you push you towards around it to raise additional capital because you're just in a, in a tight spot. Sometimes that's, you know, a sign that, you know, the business isn't going to be able to survive. And in that case, what we're going to do is work with you to figure out how we can make your investors full, how we can work together to protect our people while also protecting your business. One thing I will mention is what we don't do is we don't do personal guarantees. So we fundamentally believe that you should, if you're going to lose your business, to also lose your house is like a little excessive. Part of investing is there's risk involved. And so what we try and do is work directly with the business and the business's assets, as opposed to jumping over into your personal life and gutting you at a point where you're probably already fairly gutted. Which is huge because that's one of the biggest things that keeps people away from doing loans, even some of the small business loans. Yeah. Uh, Martin, I know you had a question. Do you want to hop off of mute? Yeah. Can you give me some sort of idea what percentage is interest and what that amount would be? And then how much on principal is that divided by if it's a five year, you, you work out the five year repayment and then that comes down to what your monthly fee is plus the interest. Can you just give me some sort of more breakdown as to what that interest fact is as opposed to me going to a bank to get it? What, how much more am I going to be paying uh, going through this at this stage? Oh, well, that's the beauty, Martin. You're not going to be paying anymore. Um, so... Our interest rates are between four on the low end and 9% on the high end. So we're not a hard money lender. You're not going to find double digit interest rates. You're not going to find, you know, 15 or 18% loans. So a typical raise, I'm going to guess here because I don't have it right in front of me. But if I remember, uh, $100,000 would equate to a $2,000 a month monthly payment over five years. So on $100,000, you'd probably pay around $20,000 of interest over a five-year period. So about $4,000 of interest a year, about, you know, 29 or so, 20, 25, somewhere around there. Okay. Well, it's just really looking at what, you know, they have opportunities to raise money. You've got to look at, I know you're saying it's not, bad, but at the end of the day, there is a, you have to look at which is the most effective way to, to buy. And especially if you've got a successful business, you're going to grow. You've got to say, I don't want to bring in a partner, but I, I have access to get capital, which is the best way to get my money. And how do I grow the business the most efficient way? And obviously, and have uh, people follow us who are going to continue to buy the product as well. Yeah, well, yeah. that's that's a big piece is what we don't tell folks is, you know, if you buy a Tesla, they're like, well, here's the cost of the car, but your gas savings really make the effective cost of the car less. Um, what we say is, you know, you may be paying seven and a half percent interest, but if it generates two or three thousand dollars of, you know, net new sales just by virtue of the monthly payments, you know, that covers one payment a year. Um, and so there are pieces here that kind of drive that, you know, the, 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 Folks, I think, oftentimes focus too much on comparing interest rate to interest rate. It's not always apples to apples. And then well, so one other thing is when you're adding a business uh, and you say you're looking at whether they're making profits, what percentage do you look at when you're talking about when they've got inventory and they're looking at receivables that are current and good? How, when you evaluate that amount, how do, what do, you do you take that into account when you look at the value of the business? Yeah, of course. So we're looking at uh, the balance sheet, the profit and loss, and the statement of cash flows. Um, and we, we take a holistic look. So part of it is financial. The other part is things that you don't control, the market environment, right? Where are we at in interest rates across the country? What's the Fed doing, right? What are SBA loans doing? What, like, you know, what's, what's the lending environment overall? Part of it is the leadership, the qualitative piece of, you know, have you run a company like this before? A business that's been around for 15 years is different than a business that's been around for two. Um, and so all those things come into effect. And we actually deliver you like a risk scorecard when you come and get a preliminary assessment so you can see how we evaluated your business. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the one thing that I think is interesting I've been preaching a lot recently is um, there's not one path to raise capital. And I think a lot of brands think of like, which path am I going to go down? Because right at the beginning, you don't have that many options, but really thinking about it in terms of building your capital stack for the company, what percentage is going to be equity? What percentage is going to be debt? Where's that debt come from? Where's the equity come from? And how you kind of build those over time. Um, and, you know, Martin, like you mentioned, there's, you know, low, some, there's, low debt options, there's high debt options, there's a ton in between. And so you have to find the, 
you know, I always tell brands like start with the lowest debt available for you. A lot of times that's, you know, credit card with 30 day terms where if you're paying it off, you have no interest. Um, and then you work your way up from, from there kind of as you, as you need the money. Um, ben, one thing that I was thinking about, so I know profitability is a big uh, piece that you look for, um, but a lot of the brands who I know are on here as well are not necessarily, they're not profitable, um, but some of them are also raising um, like equity as well. And yep. so they might have cash in the bank for the next two years or a plus, um, which they have as a basis to to use and maybe they want to supplement that with with loans. Um, have you come across that and how have you take that into consideration? Yeah, definitely. No, we love venture back camp companies, right? Like if you're raising an equity round or even as with friends and family round, you know, that's just cash that you have to responsibly dispose and gives you a better, you know, opportunity to make that monthly payment back. Um, so we are very familiar with that. We prefer that. And we think this is a great, you know, we see a lot of folks go raise an equity round and then add some debt alongside that with this, right? Go get the strategic partnerships through your venture capital firm or through friends and family, strategic partners, however you're structuring that piece, and then allow the community to be involved, right? And retail investors to be involved, you know, on the other side of the business through this debt so that you're activating them and you're using this almost as much as a marketing tool as you are using it as a, you know, as a way to fund and grow your business. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. Shabani just mentioned she had a similar question. Um, the other you thing also see is, just on that note is I like to talk, my parents were small business owners, so they ran a camp. And so I talk about this term of like disguised profitability, right? If you have a hundred thousand dollars in profit at the, and you're in December, you're going to go talk to your accountant and you kind of are facing two options. Do I go pay 40% or 30% of that in taxes and that just disappears and I have a profitable business? Or can I buy some piece of equipment, right? Buy additional inventory, right? To, you know, that I can use later, right? To reduce that profit number so I'm paying less in taxes. You know, we are familiar with that strategy. It makes sense. And so what we're looking at is, you know, we know how to differentiate, you know, taking a larger salary as a founder and then finding somebody who knows that if push comes to shove, you know, you're going to reduce your salary before you default on your loan, right? You want that business to succeed. You want that business to continue. Or, hey, you know, we broke even this year, but we added $200,000 of asset because we're getting ready to move production in-house um, because, you know, we have a, another contract up down the line. So what I would say is come talk to us. Let's have a conversation about your business. And then from there, we'll figure out, you know, what part of this is financial and possible, right? What can you really afford? And the other part of it is, um, you know, what's on the horizon and, and some of the qualitative pieces in the, in the conversation. Perfect. Other questions that we have, feel free to either put them in the chat, raise your hand, or you can just jump off of um, mute and ask those to Ben directly. Uh, ben has a, Bill has a question, as an investor, are you in for the total term or is the investment liquid? Yeah, so good question. As of today, what I will say is they are in for the total term. So you can uh, transfer, the SEC rules dictate that you can transfer a bond to friends and family, or you can gift a bond to immediate friends and family. So there is ways that you could, you know, gift that or give it to somebody else if you wanted to get out of it and get paid by Venmo or something on the backside of the transaction. We can facilitate the movement of ownership to, again, a very specific set of individuals. But what we are working on um, is ways to, in the future, provide, you know, liquidity to investors, um, you know, as a service. Hey, Benjamin, quick question. I, I'm sorry, you might have answered this. I apologize. I was yeah, all good. Call. Um, is there like a, uh, because this is a bond, I'm trying to figure out how this versus uh, like a, a, a traditional loan from a bank, is there like any early term payments or anything like that? Or can you pay it off earlier? Because, you know, this seems like a heavy amount of interest. And so I just wanted to make sure it's like, you know, if we did have an influx of cash, would it be able to pay it off? Yeah, um, you can pay it off. So we have no prepayment penalties. We think that's the right thing to do. Um, we've actually had one be paid off early. So um, in right around March of 2020, we worked with a company called Uji Time here in San Francisco. They're a, a ice cream shop. They have like really unique flavors like sweet potato and black sesame. And they've got a nice fish cone and all that stuff. Um, and so what they did was they just wanted some capital to actually go out and purchase a mochi company 
they went and purchased that mochi company, put the mochi in all their stores, and they they like it was a huge success, right? Everybody just ended up buying ice cream and a bit of mochi. And so over the course of the year, they basically made up all of their principal. And so they ended up just paying that back early after their first year. And in that case, what we'll do is you just pay back the remaining principal amount. And then we'll, you know, give that to investors and we tell them, hey, we can't guarantee another investment like this. This could be paid off early. Um, what I can't have you do, and this is going to get a little nuanced, um, is you can't pay more than your monthly payment. So I can't have a situation where your monthly payment is like $2,000 and you're making $4,000 payments because then it, it changes things for investors. And then we're telling them seven and a half percent, but then it gets paid off early and it just kind of confuses all those other things. So what we say is you can pay off the remaining principal or you can make your monthly payment. But a workaround we've done is like you just set up a separate bank account. You know, you you take that extra capital into that separate bank account, right, until it matches the principal amount and then you can pay it off. So there's ways to kind of work around that. The Great other thing on. that I'll mention here. Oh, go ahead. No, nope, you're good. Okay. The other thing I'll mention is we do support institutional investors on uh, our platform. So we have a couple, you know, small, um, you know, investment groups. We have some institutional folks who, um, or if you have institutional relationships of your own, one of the ways that we've worked with folks is to actually just facilitate the transaction. And then we can work with those institutions to onboard them to the platform to purchase your bonds, right? And then you don't have to deal with if you're looking at a debt deal outside of, you know, SMBX or individually all the payment, all the paperwork, all the things that go through that. So we can have this almost like bring your own capital solution is what I call it. Um, I just like to throw that out in case you're in conversations with folks or institutions, sophisticated partners who might wanna invest in your business through an LLC, that's not an issue on SMBX. And we'll do all the tax paperwork, all the forms, all that at the end of the year. Like right now we're issuing all the 1099s to folks. So you don't have to do any of that. You don't, there's no monthly fee to transfer capital from your bank account to ours and out to the, you know, the hundreds of investors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. My last question, uh, Benjamin, would be, so how does this work in uh, sub subordination, right? So just say we have you guys and didn't have a traditional bank. Do you guys take a second position or are you guys um, pushing for a first position? How does that work? Um, it depends on the business. So sometimes what we'll do is we'll just say, let's refinance that existing bank loan, right? If you're paying 10, 11, 12% interest on an existing bank loan, or you took money out, you know, that's even higher than that. Credit card debt is another good example, right? Where if you've put a bunch of capital on credit cards and you just want to refinance those credit cards to lower your monthly payment, um, we can facilitate those. So it's really a case by case basis. I can't say. Sometimes we're comfortable taking a second position. Sometimes we we feel like we can't do it unless we refinance the loan above it. Um, and so sometimes it's a combination of both. Um, so come talk to us, and we'll put you through preliminary assessment, and our underwriting team will work with you on on how we'd structure that. Awesome. Perfect. Any other final questions for Ben? Karen, one, one more question um, uh, for you, Ben. So you talked about how we come to you, show you our financials, and then you let us know the amount we'd be approved for and we go out and raise. So what happens if you don't get fully subscribed? Like, let's say you approved us for 250, we only get 100 uh, yep. K in interest. Do we still close or is that kind of a red flag? No, 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 you can still close. Um, so we set a minimum and a maximum. As long as you end up in between there, okay. you can take that money and run. You can cancel and say, hey, thanks, but I need the full 250. Um, we had one situation where we're working with a CPG company out of San Diego, um, and they ended up right on the last day, they got a notification from the CDC. They were going to close. And on the last day, they got a notification that they could have a um, salmonella issue with their product. And so we held off closing. We figured out what they were going to do, and they ended up refunding investors all of their capital. They weren't at fault, but they just wanted to slow their growth, take a step back. And so we've done that before. You'll yeah. find what we want to do is work with you to make sure you're successful with the caveat of we need to protect investors because protecting investors is going to be good for your business anyway. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Perfect. Well, if that's, there's any other questions, I'll also share Vince's email with everyone after this, along with the recording as well. Um, so you can follow up with any individual questions, but what I always recommend, at least it's worth a conversation to see if you're a good fit and 
if not, you know, when might be and what you need to get ready so that you have this in your toolbox and you can use this for planning into the future. Um, so with that, Ben, thanks so much for being on. I appreciate you sharing all the information today. It was super valuable. Yeah, happy. Check out our website. You can also invest on your own if you're like, you know, hey, this might not be for me. There's no reason you can't go put a couple bucks in, try it yourself. So um, let us know and uh, always here to help. Awesome. Thanks so much and have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. Happy Friday.